Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Megan and today I finally feel like filming again. It's been a hot second since I've sat down and filmed. It's honestly been a hot second since I have sat down and read even. I don't think I've done either for about two weeks. So first, so just to give kind of a quick life update, I went to Hawaii, which was the first week and obviously that was not any negative anything i was just so busy doing the excursions and everything in hawaii that i didn't have time to film or read i did get some b-roll footage but i was really bad about like talking vlogging so in a future vlog i might just throw in some b-roll in that sort of fashion but as far as like an actual hawaii vlog you're probably not gonna get that unfortunately <laughs> however in Hawaii on Friday my parents called me and told me that they uh, were sick and they were heading to the hospital so that kind of put a damper on my mood my mom has been in the hospital for a couple days now and I've just not had any motivation to do anything because I love my mom so much and I've just been worried about her and it's just been a stressful time we also have had like rolling power outages at our apartment and we have some big events coming up at work and I've just been extremely stressed and I'm not under the weather per se. I've just had no motivation. I've literally been like laying in bed when I'm not at work. I haven't done anything else, but it has given me the opportunity to catch up on a lot of booktube um, and some movies and TV shows that I've been meaning to catch up on. So I guess that's a positive in a way, but yeah. Um, so please send thoughts and prayers and whatever you believe in and positive vibes my way because my mom is still in the hospital, she's not in the clear yet and I'm just super stressed but I did feel motivated to get up and put on some makeup, do my hair and I was going to take advantage of that today. So today I'm going to be sharing my September wrap up and also my October TBR. I did film an October TBR game but I'm not gonna post it for two reasons. One, because I'm so unmotivated, I really just want to read what I am feeling motivated to read right now and not what a board game chose for me. And two, the footage is nowhere to be found. I cannot find it anywhere. I filmed it on my camera. I watched it on my camera after I filmed it, but then when I put the SD card in my computer, the footage is not there. So I don't know where it is. So yeah, I, I don't feel like refilming it. I'm just going to share what I want to read in October here. So after that really long, unnecessary intro, let's get into things. So I'm not really going in any specific order here. I'll just show you the books that I did not have a physical copy of first. Uh, first, I read The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This is a thriller about a couple who are having a wedding on this island in Ireland, I believe it is. However, there's right at the beginning, there's a dead body, and then you're following different perspectives to find out, one, who the dead body is, and then two, who the killer is. And I think the tagline is, oh yeah, it's right here, uh, The Guest List. You'd kill to be on it. So... It was pretty good. Um, it was one of my first thrillers ever. I do have one other thriller on this book, so I'll actually touch on that one uh, right after this one. So like thriller, horror, murder mystery vibes. It's like my first venture into this world and it was okay. Um, it wasn't my favorite. I felt like the, um, the supposed killer, I guess the actual killer, just didn't really make sense to me it had no full impact to me because it came out of left field I was very confused a lot of the time and I just was not attached to these characters so overall I think I gave it like a three star it was entertaining but like not my favorite if that makes sense so speaking of thrillers um, I'm saying thriller correct me if I'm wrong I could be in a completely different vein genre but the next one I read was the seven and a half dust of Evelyn Hardcastle and this one I thoroughly enjoyed which is why I've 
went into the guest list. I actually read this one first. This one is following a man who wakes up at a party and Evelyn dies at the end of the party and it is his task to figure out who the killer is. However, the catch is he wakes up in a different person's body each day and he only has, I think, eight days to solve the case. So it's really entertaining to follow his, it's almost like Groundhog Day, but not at the same time. Um, so it's interesting to follow his perspective or rather each of these characters perspectives also his perspective um, I think it's a really great gateway novel into this thriller horror area if you're more into fantasy because it does have that fantastical element of like waking up in a different person's body each day um, so that was really interesting and the killer totally made sense Everything made sense and it was really, really fun. So I really enjoyed this one. Next, I read A Net Galley of Lake's Edge by Lyndall Clipstone. I love this one purely for the cover alone, but this is a like almost dark paranormal retelling of Beauty and the Beast. I originally, I don't know why, thought it was a Phantom of the Opera retelling, but it's actually Beauty and the Beast. And, or I don't know if that's like, clarified or like verified by the author that it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling but it felt very much in that vein. Uh, I mean he gives her a garden as opposed to a library. The girl falls in love with the beast. I'm pretty sure it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I really enjoyed the plot and the storyline and the atmosphere and everything. Really my only um what's the word like negative I can't think of words um really my only like problem with this book was our main character throughout the story is very protective of her brother to the extent that it's kind of annoying in the plot lines like I get that she's supposed to be overprotective but it's almost too much at times so that was really my only like agitation with the book um I really enjoyed these characters, I really enjoyed the storyline, I really enjoyed everything about it except that, so I think I gave it a 4 star, but I'm definitely looking forward to reading a um, sequel if there is one. I think there's going to be one. I can't remember. I've read so many books and I'm just so out of it that I don't remember a lot of things about these books at this point in time. Next I read What Once Was Mine by Liz Braswell. This is part of the Twisted Tales series. If you don't know what the Twisted Tales are, they are a series of books from the Disney Hyperion collection in which it's a Disney specific retelling. Uh, so like be there's Beauty and the Beast retellings, but this is specifically a Disney Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, or in the case of the book I actually read, it was a Tangled retelling. So not just a Rapunzel retelling, a Tangled retelling in which we ask a question and then answer the question through the story. So if you have watched the what if episodes for the Marvel Universe, it's very similar to that. So it's like, what if Rapunzel's mother drank from the wrong flower? So instead of drinking from the sunflower, which provides like health and the golden hair and everything, and like the healing powers that Rapunzel garners from that sunflower, Rapunzel's mother drinks the moon flower, which gives Rapunzel different abilities, to say the least. So it was really interesting to follow that storyline. I think Liz Braswell did a really good job of capturing the essence and personality of the characters, regardless of the change in plot. I really loved the like inner turmoil and like the inner conflict that Rapunzel went through in this story and it was just a lot of fun. My only gripe, there's the word I was looking for, gripe. My only gripe with this story is I felt like the story, like the love, the romance between Flynn and Rapunzel was a little bit rushed as opposed to the movie. I felt it was a bit rushed in the book. I felt it was kind of insta-lovey and I didn't really like that. So that was my only gripe, but otherwise it was a fantastic read and I can't wait to read the rest of the Twisted Tales. Next, I read Normal People by Sally Rini. This has been a highly, highly talked about book on booktube. Oh my gosh, there is, someone's having a bad day. Give this a second. 
this is a highly highly talked about book on booktube recently because of books with chloe jamie caitlin that group has really hyped it up recently so i think them talking about it has like widespread it throughout the book community also my friend sydney has read it and enjoyed it so i wanted to pick it up as well so i did that it follows connell and marianne who are it's like a it's not a romance but it's a romance at the same time it's really hard to describe this book it's basically the concept of despite everything going wrong two people can still find their way to each other and i really liked that storyline um yeah it wasn't my favorite book ever but i did really find it entertaining and i was like grasped and hooked the whole time reading it so I think I gave it four or four point five stars. Next I read The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones which follows a grave digger who is the like sole protector of the town from these entities called bone houses. Bone houses are essentially the dead rising again um, and we are also following a second perspective of a young man who went missing when he was younger and he came back to the town he went missing from or like an area he went missing from he's a map maker so he's determined to like map out what the area and terrain looks like but also to find his like missing family and together they pair up to go into the mountains to map this terrain and I just really loved this commentary on grief and loss and when it's time to let things go and that sort of thing. I think it was a really good commentary and it's also a good spooky read so I highly recommend this one for fall. Next I read An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green as well as I don't own the physical copy um, nor did I get it from the library because I read the audiobooks. Regardless, I also read um, a beautifully foolish endeavor which is the sequel to an absolutely remarkable thing so in this we are following a world in which several of these like almost transformer-esque statues drop out of nowhere in the middle of the night and our main character comes across one her name is april she is an artist so she is very intrigued by this statue so she does a quick video about it that ends up going viral and she is like known as the first person to discover these even though they've dropped all over the world and it ends up that it's like actually an alien race or something of that nature and everyone starts having the same dream <clears throat> and it's just this whole ordeal but I really love the commentary of like getting sucked into social media and letting that define you and everything. This is a book I probably would not have picked up just of my own volition. Like if I saw this, I'm very much a cover buyer. I'm very bad about that. So if I had seen this, I probably wouldn't have picked it up just on my own. However, after following Hank Green on TikTok and also hearing several of my friends express positive sentiments about this book i ended up picking it up and it ended up being a fantastic book i never would have thought i liked this so i'm very glad i ended up reading it a beautifully foolish endeavor was also pretty good however i think it took a step back for me just when it introduced the perspective of the other characters i much preferred the story told from the perspective of just one person um the multiple perspectives just kind of threw me off and made things confusing um but it was still a good story. An absolutely remarkable thing though was absolutely remarkable. <laughs> Next, I read The Royal We and then subsequently The Air Affair. This is like, this is the selection or um, what's the other one? Oh, The American Royals. It's like that, but adult and i was thriving you guys this is exactly the type of book i i love um i purely if you haven't caught on by now i read for enjoyment and entertainment not necessarily like commentary and thought provoking works i read for enjoyment i read for escapism so um not to say that i don't read for the others but mostly enjoyment and entertainment and this was enjoyment and entertainment let me tell you 
In the royal we, we are following Bex, um, who has a twin sister. Her twin sister has always been like the golden child and Bex is the kind of rebel. So Bex goes to England to go to an art school, I believe, and ends up meeting the prince there. And together they become friends and fall in love and it's basically their love story. There's so much drama, so much drama. And I just, it's so, so good. I gave both of these books five stars. If you enjoy like political drama and romantic drama and royal like Regency romance and like contemporary royal stuff, highly, highly recommend these books. <laughs> Next, I read The Boyfriend Project and The Dating Playbook. This is part of a companion series. So in The Boyfriend Project, we meet, I'm gonna get these names wrong, Samaya, London, and Taylor. Each of these three girls is dating the same man and their like discovery of finding out the man is cheating on them goes viral and we're following their stories throughout the three books. So we have The Boyfriend Project and the dating playbook. I don't know what the third book's going to be, but I'm guessing it's going to follow the third girl. So in the boyfriend project, we are following Samaya, who is in the tech industry as a woman, and she's dealing with, you know, like being a woman in the tech industry. Um, she has built this like mentality of like no men, no boyfriends. They have created a pact with between the three girls to not have boyfriends. However, at the exact same time they create this pact, of course, our new character, Daniel Collins, begins working at the office. Daniel is actually undercover to um, figure out who committed fraud at Samaya's workplace. However, no one knows that, including Samaya. So they start forming a relationship and Daniel's like having that inner conflict of should he tell her that he's undercover should he can like go for this relationship knowing he's going to be leaving soon when he finishes the job so on so forth and i just it was so good i love them the dating playbook we are following taylor's story taylor is a personal trainer and is very very um in need of money and um, behind on bills and that sort of thing and she's just trying to get her like side hustle off the ground and just find a job that's suitable for her. A former football NFL player uh, ends up finding her videos on personal training and wants to hire her to help him recover from a knee injury and make his way back into the NFL and and because he doesn't want people to know that he is training to try to get back into the NFL so he doesn't like hurt anyone's feelings if he isn't able to make it back or like let people down they are on a fake dating fake relationship type thing so that no one knows that he's training and I love fake dating everything about this was fantastic I just thoroughly enjoyed these romances romances yep romances Another five star read for me was Crown of Coral and Pearl by Mara Rutherford. This is a pirate sea mermaid area novel done right. This follows the story of two twin sisters who live in a town on the sea and this town is like forbidden from entering land. Like they can't go on land at all. They can only stay on their like little sea township and our main character has always dreamed of going on land and like seeing the world but the only way they she can do this is by winning the competition to become the next princess and this is completely judged off of beauty so her and her twin sister are kind of like in competition but not really because as a young child our main character saved her uh, twin sister from a life-threatening situation and ended up with a scar on her face. So she is known as like less beautiful than her twin sister. So her twin sister is sent to be the princess and I'm explaining this terribly, but essentially it's a commentary on beauty and uh, like seeing the world and the romance in this was incredible. I loved it. Yes, I cannot wait to pick up Kingdom of Sea and Stone. It's such a unique 
story and I highly recommend this. Next I have the manga and graphic novels I read. I read the first two volumes of Sailor Moon, so these two. I had no idea Sailor Moon was a middle schooler, let me tell you. That was a shock when I found that out. However, I thoroughly enjoyed the manga just as I thought I would. I'm currently on volume three. Cannot wait to keep reading the series and I'm hoping to find the cartoon anime somewhere um, online, somewhere that I can watch it. I think it's on like HBO or Hulu, I forget which one. It starts with an H or maybe it's Paramount. I forget, doesn't matter, anyways. Next and final graphic novel I read was Hookie by Miriam Bonastritur. I, like this might be my favorite graphic novel I've ever read, you guys. It was so, it's like a chunker, but it's a graphic novel, so it's like less intimidating. And we are following two twin witches who are about to head to witch school, but they miss the bus. And the bus is the only way to discover the location of the school. So they are on the hunt for a like tutor or teacher so that their parents don't know that they didn't learn anything while they were gone. And they come across like the witch haven or like, I don't know what it's called, um, and discover like bad things are happening and they team up with another sorcerer from this small town and also a princess and it's just so chaotic but so fun. And it's such a thick graphic novel that it actually, like there's times where graphic novels feel like they don't have a true plot to me because they go by so quickly, but this felt like it had a plot. I love the illustrations. I love the characters. This is definitely one of my favorite graphic novels of all time, if not my favorite graphic novel of all time. The only thing it's competing with is uh, the Tea Dragon Society here. Um, I also really, really love this one, but so good so good my final book of september was kingdom of the wicked by carrie maniscalco for my book club if you aren't aware i have a book club every month in which we read a ya book of some sort it's tending towards fantasy quite often but we have read some contemporary as well um i'll link it down below as well as my adult romance book club that is starting in october and Kingdom of the Wicked was incredible, you guys. I don't know why I thought I wasn't going to like it because it was so good. It's a murder mystery. It has very much the beautiful vibes and I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I do wish I had food on hand when reading this book because it was very intense in the like food descriptions. But overall, this book was five out of five stars. All right, enough talking about September. Let's jump into October real quick. I'm gonna try to do this quickly because we're already looking at like a half hour video right here. So uh, as I said, I did already create an October TBR. However, the books that came on that, I'm just like not feeling right now. Honestly, the only thing I feel like doing right now is finishing the series I've started. And then also my book clubs. So. Speaking of book clubs, the YA book club will be reading The Beautiful by Marine Adier. This is a murder mystery set in 1870s, I want to say. Yeah, 1872 New Orleans, and it's got paranormal romance. And this was one of my favorite books of last year, so this will be a reread for me, which is super exciting. And then I also hope to pick up The Damned and the Righteous. Uh, I forget if The Righteous comes out in October or November. So if it comes out in October, I hope to read it. If it comes out in November, I'll hope to read it then. Regardless of when it comes out, I hope to read it when it comes out. <laughs> and then for adult romance, we're reading If the Shoe Fits, which is a part of the Meant to Be series, a series of adult romances based on Disney. They're like Disney retellings. So this one is Cinderella, and it's basically if Cinderella was like in the Bachelor-esque setting, and I cannot wait to read this. As for series, I'm hoping to catch up on the uh, Witchland series, so that includes Wind Witch, Sight Witch, Blood Witch, and Witch Shadow. I believe there's going to be more in this series, but I would just like to catch up on them. I'm currently reading Wind Witch. I'm on page 96, which is the start of chapter 10, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, Truth Witch wasn't like my favorite, favorite book of all time. It was better the second reread, but I'm 
enjoying Wind Witch more already. Next, I'd like to finish the Furyborn trilogy, which includes Kingsbane and Lightbringer. This is... Furyborn is like one of my top books of the year. It follows elemental magic and two queens. One is a um, sun queen and one is a blood queen. One has the power to destroy the world and one has the power to save it. And we're following two perspectives and we have to figure out which queen is which and we just figured it out. So now going into Kingsbane, I'm interested to see how that plays out. Next is the Love and Other Destination series. I have actually already read Love and Gelato and Love and Luck. I just need to read Love and Olives. Um, I've only read them on audiobook, which is the only way I've been able to finish books so far in the past two weeks. Then we have Rule of Wolves, which is the final book of the Grishaverse as of now, and the sequel to King of Scars. We have Gods and Monsters, which is the third book of the Serpent and Dove trilogy. And finally, we have Kingdom of Sea and Stone, which again is the sequel to Crowd of Coral and Pearl. So that is kind of my September wrap up, my October TBR, my life update, everything going on right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for being so patient with my like impromptu break here. And I hope to see you guys soon. With So see you guys then. Thank you so much. And I'll check you in my next one. Bye everyone.